everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Sarcoidosis. Thank you for watching us, and we do appreciate our viewers. I have my co-host, Mr. Richard Hanna. Thank you so much for being here today, Rich. Thank you for having me. And guess what? We have a celebrity <laughs> in the studio today. Well, she has so many looks of beautiful actresses, so that's why I'm calling her our celebrity. We have Judy Garretts, and she's from the Center for vein restoration welcome to the show thank you for having me thank you for being here you're going to give us a lot of insight about veins yes, yes all right so let me just start with the first question can you tell us what is vein disease so it's actually a very common disease that a lot of people don't know about mm -hmm. um it's basically the what's happening is the blood is not flowing in your veins in the direction it's supposed to okay um to explain it a lot of people just to um, make it simple. In the mm -hmm. veins, the, or at least the veins in your legs, we want mm -hmm. the blood to go up towards your heart. Oh. Always. Um, mm -hmm. uh, arteries, the blood goes towards your body, and the mm -hmm. veins, it goes up towards your heart. Now, we have valves all over our veins, and they mm -hmm. act as doors. What these doors do is they close to prevent blood from coming back down. Um, in a case when somebody has vein disease, these mm -hmm. valves are flappy, or they'll just leak, oh, wow. and blood still leaks down, and that essentially is vein disease. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are the, uh, some of the common symptoms of vein disease? So for vein disease, some of the most common symptoms that we see patients come in with is mm -hmm. um, restless legs, uh, cramping, but usually cramping at night. Um, a lot of people okay. will say, you know, I have a lot of cramping. It's not usually the cramping that you'll have when you're exercising right. or um, because you've walked a lot. It's, it's cramping at night, and many times people say they can't sleep because of that wow. cramping sensation. Okay. And that also goes along with restless legs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't really know a lot about restless legs, but mm -hmm. restless legs, um, you feel like you constantly have to move your legs at night. And sometimes the partner is the one who notices that patient has <laughs> restless legs. They're like, I, can't, can't, I just keep getting kicked at night. <laughs> Um, so until the pa the person you know moves around and gets right. up, they essentially will um, the restless legs feeling will go away. Okay. Um, heaviness especially too, wow. um, because of the blood is leaking back down and it's pulling near your ankles. Your legs feel very heavy. Mm -hmm. um, also, swelling of the ankles is very very common. Okay. Um, and then there's a, the traditional signs of the visible signs, such as uh, spider veins, which is usually the colorful veins that right. kind of spread out, okay. and the varicose veins, which are the bulgy veins that are ropey around your wow. legs. So what are the risk factors? So risk factors um, are many. That's okay. why it's such a common disease mm -hmm. um, for both men and women. Mm -hmm. um, if you've had a job where you stand for a long period of time, it's a huge risk factor. We have a lot of patients who work in retail or who are nurses or doctors. Oh, yes. Basically, any job mm -hmm. where you stand for a long period of time, you okay. are increasing your, your chances of having vein disease. Um, if you've had multiple pregnancies, um, because you have a higher blood volume and you're putting more pressure on your legs, that definitely impacts your mm -hmm. veins. Um, if you uh, have had any trauma to your legs, um, I have a lot of patients come in where they've had an accident, been in a car accident, right. or they've had knee replacements, and they've had trauma to that leg. Mm -hmm. So that definitely impacts the veins. Um, what else? Hereditary. Um, I know mm -hmm. in my case, both of my parents have mm -hmm. a disease, so I can right. pretty much guarantee that I will have it as well. Right. Um, a lot of patients say, you know, my grandmother had it, or my mother mm -hmm. had it, or my father had it, so it's mm -hmm. definitely a huge factor in vein disease. Right. Like I was saying before mm -hmm. the show. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So are there visual signs that people can see? So yeah, so the two most popular visual signs are the spider veins and the varicose veins, but just because you don't have them doesn't mean you don't have vein disease. That's, mm -hmm. all, that's another misconception about vein disease. Mm -hmm. Somebody can have beautiful model-like legs, right. but you know you can still have vein disease. But um, the most common two are spider veins, which is the colorful uh, veins that kind of just spread out. Mm -hmm. um, in women, it's very common to have them in the thighs, behind mm -hmm. the knees, but men also have them as well. Mm -hmm. And the ropey veins, which are the varicose veins, which um, are very obvious. They just okay. bulge out. Yes. Um, and they sometimes run a lot in the inside of the leg, and they just kind of um, wow. rub around. So. Yeah. so are varicose veins a cosmetic issue or a medical issue? So it depends. Um, many times it is a medical issue and we deal with more of the medical side of it. Mm -hmm. The only way to find out is to get that ultrasound exam, to get an actual exam with a vein doctor. Mm -hmm. Because they w once it's affecting your quality of life, once you're having these symptoms of you know, restless legs, of cramping, of swelling, it's affecting your quality of life. You're no longer feeling comfortable right. you know, sleeping or walking around or sitting down. And if you have those varicose veins, your veins are getting stretched and stretched and stretched to the point wow. where it could even lead to a leg ulcer. So 
once it reaches that point, it is now a medical condition. Right. And it's no longer cosmetic. Wow. So if our listeners out there have these signs or symptoms, what should they do? So once you start feeling a little, um, you know, something unique in your legs, something that's sound, that seems a little off, you definitely mm -hmm. want to talk to your primary doctor. Um, I know we've been uh, trying to educate the primary doctors mm -hmm. and referring to vein doctors because many times they do say it's only cosmetic. Mm -hmm. But definitely let them know what's going on, what symptoms you're feeling. and. Right tell them that you want to see a vascular doctor. Mm -hmm. Because a vascular doctor, what they will do is they will do an ultrasound, um, which is basically just like when a woman is pregnant, they right. check their belly, they do the same thing with both legs. Right. They want to check both legs from groin to ankle. And they check all your veins, they check superficial veins and they, t and they check um, deep veins. Mm -hmm. And they want to see what veins are working fine and what veins are causing the issues. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they can determine if you have what's called the fancy word venous insufficiency, which basically means you have vein disease. Okay. Um, they measure how long, if you do have blood coming back down, for how long it's coming back down. And from wow. there, they determine, you know, if it's cosmetic, if, you know, if you're early in vein disease, in the stages of vein disease, or if you're pretty far advanced, they can determine all that. Okay, so I have a two-part question. Yes. <laughs> um, how is this treated, and then also, um, does the insurance pay for the treatments? So that's a very important question. That's right. usually the number one question that patients right. come um, and ask the us. Insurance. So yes, <laughs> it's a very important question. <laughs> so um, how it's treated? Uh, it's very different from like ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I am sure both of you have heard about vein stripping. Um, um, I haven't actually. So. It's a, it was a common uh, treatment done about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Basically, if somebody had varicose veins, spider veins, um, they would be admitted to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They would be put to sleep. Um, they would literally really? strip your veins, um, and you'd be left with scars. It was a, it, you had, there was downtime. You know, you usually um, had a rest for a few days. So it was a pretty invasive procedure. Okay. Um, a lot of patients come in, they're like, oh, I had, you know, vein stripping 20 years ago, and right. I have scars from it, and, you know, you know, I have other veins that have come back, and I'm just not happy with the treatments that were right. done. So that is no longer used, okay. um, thankfully. Uh, we have, yes. you know, definitely advanced from that. Wow. Um, they're all minimally invasive now. They're all done in the office. They're no longer in the hospital. Right. Um, usually what will be done is after you get that ultrasound exam, mm -hmm. and they determine what veins are not working properly, they just numb the area that right. you need work done, and then they'll use heat or laser to shut down the vein. Because mm -hmm. once that vein is not working like it should, right. you need to shut it down so blood can be rerouted to healthier veins. Okay. And then from there, your body absorbs the vein, and your body will eventually regenerate a new vein. Okay. And you won't feel the symptoms. There's no right. downtime. Um, crazy enough, but some people sometimes right. come during their lunch break. Get really? the procedure done and then go back to work because we That's want good. we want patients walking around to That's prevent being productive. Any. No, yes, <laughs> I mean people have busy schedules, so like you know, just fit me in. Right. This is about a thirty to forty-five minute procedure. It's very right. fast. Okay. Um, so that's that's one of the common treatments, heat mm -hmm. or laser. Um, also, it's something called sclerotherapy. That's usually to treat spider veins. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a small injection that will go onto the individual vein that is not working like it should. Okay. And it also shuts down the vein, and then your blood is rerouted to healthier veins. So they're wow. all very minimally invasive, very fast procedures. Well, that was my question. Has the vein treatment changed over time? And you did elaborate, yes. but maybe there's something else that you can elaborate because I swear if you're thinking about vein stripping, I guess I wouldn't want to go and have it done myself. <laughs> that would keep me from the doctor. Now, we have so a lot of patients out who there? don't know that vein stripping right. is not used, so they're like, you know, all these years I've I've held it, I've pushed it off because I did I right. don't want to go to the hospital. There's a huge fear of, you know, invasive procedures, but a lot of patients don't know that's not used anymore. It's minimally invasive. I mean, the okay. doctors are talking to you the whole time. There's no downtime. Like I said, people they encourage people to walk around mm -hmm. as soon as the procedure's over. Um, the only major complaint that we've heard of is, you know, you might feel a little soreness as if you've worked out. Right. Um, but just Advil, you know, is enough. Okay. They don't prescribe you any any medication afterwards. So it's well, a very simple bad. procedure. Yeah. I know a lot of people have fears of needles, um, mm -hmm. but the only needle that will really be felt um, is the prick when you get the numbing medicine. Okay. So, you know, it's still somewhat invasive, but it is nothing compared to, you know, so vein stripping. stripping. <laughs> yeah, that's just embedded in my brain <laughs> right now. Jeez, I mean, think about it. Yeah. So um, those compression stockings, because they can be quite ugly, but <laughs> tell me how important those could, uh, why they use the compression stockings. So compression stockings are very important. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of patients I know, one of the first complaints we have is it's hot, mm -hmm. they're very tight, I can't put them on. 
they know, gross. they're very uncomfortable. <laughs> they're not, you know, they look ugly. Yeah. You know, I rarely hear, I rarely hear good things about compression right. stockings, but they're very important. Right. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So compression stockings are tight for a reason. Usually mm -hmm. the tighter the better mm -hmm. because they act as your muscle. They're tight to push the blood oh. up towards your heart. Um, so usually they recommend patients wearing them during the day. Um, they recommend if you go on a plane, right. wear them. Mm. If you um, are sitting down for a long period of time, like if you're taking a road trip on a car, in a okay. car, wear, wear them. them. Just because if you're sitting down and you have vein disease, your blood is just pulling to your ankles. And that's when you start feeling wow. those symptoms. Okay. So compression stockings are definitely recommended if you feel any symptoms mm -hmm. or if you have a job where you sit down for a long period of time or, or stand for a very long right. period of time. They always recommend wearing them. But the thing to note also is compression stockings is just a temporary relief. If okay. you do have vein disease, it'll help the symptoms for a while, but mm -hmm. you still need to get treatments done um, okay. eventually. But they're definitely something I would recommend. I know they're very uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I know they're very tight, they but are. you know it's just something that is right. just good for you and it's going to help alleviate those symptoms you feel. So because they give you those for after surgeries too. They do I any I surgery. You usually get compression right. stockings because you can develop blood clots really fast, especially mm -hmm. if you are you can't move very well after mm -hmm. surgery. Um, airplane rides. We we have a lot of people that get off airplane rides that. and they eventually right. get blood clots. Oh, um, and that's dangerous. And, yeah. So. Yes. Um, it's, I actually had a surgery a while ago and I, I couldn't move because I had it on my ankle and wow. I, I started feeling the symptoms of a blood clot and I got nervous. Wow. So I called my doctor and he said, how often are you moving? So he definitely recommended me getting um, compression stockings mm -hmm. in the meantime until I could be a little bit more mobile. But it's a very, um, okay. it's a very important thing to use. Wow. Yes. And so Judy, what does the Center for Venue Restoration Outreach do for the community? So we have a whole outreach team. We started about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what we do is we want to educate the public on vein disease. It's mm -hmm. such a common issue. Um, over 40 million people have it, both men and wow, women. Wow, 40 million? It is a very common issue. Um, and the number is only growing. So we want to educate people on vein disease. Let them know, you know, what the symptoms are, what the risk factors are, mm -hmm. you know, what you can do about it. The fact that, you know, you can get it treated and then insurance can cover it is so important. Mm -hmm. So we go out to communities, we go out to community fairs, we go to churches, mm -hmm. we go to senior centers, um, we go to schools, we, um, wow. we focus on teachers a lot. We'll have a, just a day dedicated to teachers and we'll go out to their county mm -hmm. and just uh, scan them, see how their legs are doing. We usually do about a five minute quick demonstration demonstration of, to check their blood flow. Right. We explain, you know, what we're seeing. We show them and people are intrigued because they're like, you know, I've been feeling all these symptoms. Yeah, you know, I thought it was something totally different. Mm -hmm. I've talked to my doctor and, you know, I've just been having this issue for so long mm -hmm. and now I finally know that it can get treated. And you don't have to suffer. No, you so don't have to say, suffer. Yeah, I mean, you know, we suffer sometimes when mm -hmm. we don't even have to. No, and it's such, you know, when you think about it, your legs are so important. Yes. Any movement you make, you are involving your legs. So, yes. you know, if you are having those cramps, if you are having those big bulgy veins, you know, if you have that leg ulcer, that's really affecting your quality of life. And the fact mm -hmm. that you can fix it in such a minimally invasive procedure is right. so important to know. Right. So, you know, our main focus is just to educate the public and let them know that mm -hmm. you can get, you know, your legs treated and, and the and you know your relief is almost instant after these procedures uh, and that's a nice quality of life. Yes, I mean, who wants to keep living like your legs are hurting and mm -hmm. you're in so much pain? But there are people that opt out mm -hmm. to having the pain because they're so afraid yes. of checking out to see what the problems are. Yeah, and we um, we dedicate certain. Um, areas specifically on, for our target population you know mm -hmm. we go to senior centers because the older you get of course mm -hmm. you know the more common vein disease is okay. you know we target teachers because they're on their feet all day right. we target retail places we've gone to restaurants because also serve anybody that works in right. you know the the restaurant industry is always on their feet so right. you know we we recommend those compression stockings we recommend you know getting your legs checked out or wearing mm -hmm. the proper shoes or you know sitting down every once in a while or if you have a job where you, sit, where you sit for a long period of time, making sure you walk every 15 minutes or something or every half hour to okay. you know, get that blood pumping. Or mm -hmm. I know women like to sit with their legs crossed oh, to switch, bad, to right? alternate them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what, we're taught okay, as a young so woman to sit like them. that. So about every you know, 15 minutes, just switch legs. Which side did I have? <laughs> yeah, that one's the switch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, very, it's a very hard okay. um, thing to That's break a, because so we're I learned taught. something, yeah. to switch my so, legs from So, you know, from just those small things that we teach people, you know, it could definitely, you know, So why is that, though? 
since we're talking about it and switching the legs. So from when you have one leg over the other, you're cutting off the blood flow on the, oh. on the, on the leg that's on the bottom. So just switching it is going to have that blood flowing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's very important. <laughs> yeah. So where are your offices located? So we are actually located all over the DMV area in this area. Um, we have offices D.C., Maryland, Virginia. We are very um, convenient. Um, yes. So uh, we do have an office in Greenbelt. I know a lot of we have. A, there's a lot of doctors' offices in Greenbelt. So okay. all of our doctors are board certified. They're all vascular specialists. They help very good bedside manners, so nice. they could definitely go in and, you know, we accept over 90% of insurance companies, so you can come in, mm -hmm. get your legs looked at. I like to say, even if you don't have a lot of symptoms, you can mm -hmm. at least find out where you are in vein disease. Okay. And, you know, what that doctor recommends. He might just say, wear compression stockings for right. now, and you could be fine, and at least you know that you are taking the proper actions okay. in, in vein disease. Is there an age group? Because I was just thinking about that. Is there a certain age group? that people should start wearing? I know you said mentioned seniors, but prior to that. Um, well, I like to say based on your lifestyle, if you know that you have a job where you stand for a long period of time, it doesn't matter what age you are, okay. you should wear compression stockings you need to, stop, to right at on. least, you know, help uh, lower your chances of having vein disease, mm -hmm. or if you're already starting to have the symptoms. Now, we do see an older population for the majority of the part, mm -hmm. um, but we still see women, you know, in their 20s who have had pregnancies and they already because if right. you have a pregnancy, you increase your chances of having vein disease. You know, they'll come in and be like, I have a varicose vein. Right. After, this, after three months, I still have it. You know, what's going on? And then, you know, we have the random young person right. who is, you know, in their early 20s who just happens to have vein disease. So it affects everybody, but for right. the most part, we have an older crowd, you know, okay. 40s, 50s, who it affects it the most. So that they need to know not to think that you have to be a certain age no, to get it. No, it can affect everybody. You can I mean, get it. I have a spider bait already. Right. Well, <laughs> so, so I showed you mine. <laughs> so, I, you know, every time I look at right. it, I look at my dad and my mom, I'm like, thank you guys right. for this. <laughs> And they're oh, like, well, yeah. you can thank my parents. Right. It's true. I mean, it runs, <laughs> it runs in the family. Uh -huh. you, you, you have a higher chance of getting it. And oh. so. Jeez. <laughs> and are your doctors board certified? Yes, they are all board certified. Um, a lot of the doctors, um, prior to working with our company, we have some doctors who used to be OBGYNs. Um, our CEO actually was, uh, he dealt with the heart before. So okay. they're all very knowledgeable in veins, and they all are very nice. And um, you know, it just, I've, I've, I'm, I'm in touch with a lot of the doctors right. and just the passion that they have for vein disease and how much they support community outreach and right. spreading the word about vein disease is just so important. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, they're good doctors. And when it comes to compression stockings, yes. what is the primary job of the stocking to do? So the stockings act like your muscle. They're tight because the, the stronger they squeeze on your leg, the more blood is pushing up. Mm -hmm. um, because if you do have a vein that's not working, it's usually dilated. It's usually, you usually have blood just going in both directions and that's not what we want. We want the blood to go up. So in that case, the compression stockings push your blood, push your veins kind of together and they mm -hmm. push that blood up. So that's why people are always complaining. They're so tight, you know, they're very they uncomfortable. <laughs> Even putting them on, mm -hmm. um, they actually have specific things to help oh my goodness, put them yes, on because they, they just are, you know, they're, they're so tight. But you know, the, unfortunately, the, the tightness the doctor gives right. you is for a reason, and he sure. most likely didn't give you the wrong size, and people are like, oh, he gave me the wrong <laughs> size. I'm sure of it. They're just, they can't possibly be, no, that's, it's probably like that. that that's enough to make you not want to wear because well, of the struggle to put it on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how long normally does a person have to wear them? So it depends. Oh, yeah. um, usually they recommend compression stockings after a procedure. If you're wearing them after a procedure, they usually have you wear them for a few days afterwards. But it would be good to use them, you know, I guess every mm -hmm. day if you could right. to help alleviate. Because once you have vein disease, it's mm -hmm. chronic and progressive. So you're going to have other areas that eventually okay. you might have issues with. So mm -hmm. wearing the compression stockings will help slow it down a little bit. Wow. But if you start feeling symptoms and you want to wear compression stockings, you know, wearing them every day. You know, when you get up, put them on. When you're about to right. go to sleep, take them off. Would be would be recommended. Right. Yeah. I do have a question. 
and we were talking about the, the women after pregnancy. What about the men? Because, I mean, you know, men are not exempt from the varicose veins and the spider veins. So, you know, do they get the same kind of symptoms or should they be also coming in just yes. as much as the women? So, although we do have more women patients, right. men are still, you know, susceptible to having vein disease. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether they'll come in, <laughs> that's why that's the, wives, show. the wives are important because the wives are the ones that right. bring the husbands in. Okay. But yes, men are still affected by vein disease. Um, they still have similar symptoms other than, you know, the risk factors of multiple pregnancies. But, right. you know, you could still have family members that have it and you right. have vein disease. Disease. A lot of men, you know, if you work in construction, if you work with oh, anything yes. that is trauma to your life, a lot of athletes come in with vein disease. Um, we've oh, had soccer players come in, right. you know, after all that trauma to their legs, after all those years, you know, they later down the line have vein disease. Um, men are just, you know, they're, they are affected. It's just right. a matter of going in and getting it treated. I've actually seen um, more men with varicose veins and big bulgy veins than women. Really? Yes. I'm not really, um, I haven't done any research to see why, okay. but I, you know, based on being out in the community, I've seen right. more men with varicose veins than women. Wow. So, no, that's an interesting statistic. Yes. So, yeah, men are definitely affected, and okay. a lot of men don't know that. You know, I have a lot of men come to our table, and right. they're like, oh, I thought this was just a woman condition. Well, it's good that you're clearing that <laughs> so, up for them. And they then, see the big vein, they think that that's muscular. Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, and, Wrong and definition, also, right? Yeah. I'll see them have a, a big bulgy vein, and they'll say, oh, it doesn't bother me. Oh, it's fine. And I'm just like, no, you can get that treated. You don't have to have right. you know, that, that big bulgy vein. Right. It doesn't even have to look like that. Mm -hmm. right. Or they also might assume if they have a pain or something that it's orthopedic, mm. um, that it might be a muscular issue. Okay. Um, but, you know, well, that's why we're there. We want to educate them and say, no, right. you know, it might be something else. You can, it doesn't hurt to get it checked and looked at, at least rule it out if it's not vascular. Right. But men are definitely affected by it. Wow. So let me ask you this. Is there anything that you want to tell the viewers? Because I tell you, the show goes by very quickly. So is there anything that we didn't talk about that you may want to elaborate, um, you know, just a little bit before we end the show? For the viewers. So I know we kind of skipped over the insurance portion of it. Okay, yeah, well, let's go back <laughs> there. That's, that's, you know, like I said, that's usually the number one thing. Right, let's somebody go comes back up to our there. table and they say, uh -huh. okay, well, does insurance cover it? Because I've been told my whole life that it's it's a cosmetic condition. Right. And um, usually the biggest thing is women will say, okay, I have a spider vein. Okay. What can you do for me? You know, and the first question I'll ask is, do you have any symptoms associated with that spider vein? Okay. Um, many times they say yes, many times they say no. Or they might just say, I had a spider vein, I had it treated, but it came back. Right. And now I've, I want to get it treated again, but insurance won't cover it. What wow. I like to tell patients is, it is a very, just because you have a spider vein does not mean it's just cosmetic. Okay. You might have a larger vein that is feeding those spider veins. Whoa. So until you close that larger vein, you'll keep getting those spider veins. That's serious. It could be really serious. Yeah. And so, can it be life threatening? No. Um, life's, that's the thing about vein disease. That's what I want to tell patients. It's not life threatening. Okay. Usually the last step of vein disease is a leg ulcer. Mm -hmm. Once you reach that leg ulcer, it's, it's, it's a little more complicated to treat mm -hmm. because, you know, you have to go to a vein specialist, mm -hmm. get it, um, get that vein shut down, but you also mm -hmm. have to go to a wound clinic okay. to heal that wound. Wow. Um, but it's still treatable at that point. But you want to avoid reaching that point because okay. it gets a little more complicated. So, wow. You know, I always mention patients. Don't worry, it's not life threatening. It's right. just a quality of life issue. You want just to just get it, yeah, just to see about get it. Get it treated. Well, you know, the show definitely was very educational. Thanks to you for coming in and taking time to share the information, much needed information <laughs> with the viewers out there for men and women. Yes. <laughs> so definitely when you see the credits at the end, if you're in the local area, be sure to call them and set up an appointment. Yes. Get it taken care of. Don't be afraid to do so. And before we end the show, I'm going to turn it over to the coach's corner with Mr. Hanna. All right. Uh, Today you heard Judy talk about getting your um, legs checked out, and and I think that's important because everyone has veins, and everyone just like everyone has uh, finances, and this is a good time to make sure that your insurance is up to date, mm -hmm. you know, and to get to use it to use it. You're paying for it; you should use it. And if you need help making sure that everything's up to date, look at the credits. Give me a call, and I'll help you with that. Right. So as I always say to all my fellow Sarkadonians out there. We all have There's sarcoidosis, but sarcoidosis, sarcoidosis doesn't, doesn't have, have us. us. Until next time, stay positive. Do yourself a favor and contact Judy Garretts at the Center for Vein Restoration because you don't have to walk around in pain. Please don't do that. Hope this message was a very powerful one. 
educational, like Mr. Hanna said, use your insurance because that's what it's for and let them take care of you. So until next time, stay blessed and be positive and just stay healthy. Have a good day.